Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God with Salami Energy Harina, your host. We are glad to have you today. Hello, good day and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboe, the journal of ourselves, the redeemed Christian Church of God. This commentary intends to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Saturday, the 24th day of August 2024, and our topic for today says, Know Yourself. Let us pray. King of glory, we are grateful for how you have led us through the week. Thank you for your faithfulness which we saw each day. Thank you for taking us out and for bringing us in safely. Thank you for disappointing all the plans of the wicked. Father, we are grateful. We say receive our thanks in Jesus' name. One more time we have come before you, Lord, to receive of your word. Lord, we ask that you would nourish us one more time. Speak to us, teach us, instruct us, and grant us the grace, Lord, to be obedient. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse for today is from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 reads, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 Our text for today is from the book of Psalm 139 from verse 13 to 14. Psalm 139 from verse 13 to 14 reads, for thou hadst possessed my reins, thou hadst covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Psalm 139 from verse 13 to 14. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, our topic for today says, Know Yourself. And in the body of today's devotional, our Father and the Lord says to us that many a times, the devil whispers things into our ears to deceive us so that we will not walk in the identity and authority that God has given to us. This is why it is necessary to know who you truly are in Christ. A king's son that does not know who he is will beg for food even in his father's palace. You must know who you are, and you can only know this when you see yourself the way God sees you. How does God see you? If you are confronted by a situation that seems tough and the devil is trying to tell you that you will not win, remember what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 37. It reads, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Even though that situation may have conquered some people in the past, it cannot conquer you because you are more than a conqueror through Christ who loved you and loves you forever. Sometimes the devil will tell you that you are not good enough to be at the top or achieve your goals. Laugh and quote Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 13 to him. It reads, And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. The Bible says that you will be above only, so there is no space for you at the bottom. The only space available for you as a child of God is above, and you will take your place in Jesus' name. The devil can say whatever he wants, but when you know the truth, you will not listen to him or accept his lies. When you know the real you in Christ, you will ignore whatever the devil says because you know that he is a liar. John chapter 8 verse 44 As you ignore him, your actions and thoughts will also follow suit. You will not let his lies dictate what you do or what you don't. His words must not shape your thoughts concerning what you believe about yourself or not. The devil is too small to control the thoughts and actions of a believer. Your living, moving, and being must be in God and not in any other counsel 
as we see in Acts chapter 17 verse 28. It reads, For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, For we are also his offspring. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more says know yourself. When a child is born, oftentimes I believe they do not know anything about themselves. They do not even know what gender they are. They do not even know if they are born into a poor family or a very rich, wealthy and influential family. They have no idea if they are the first, second, third or the last child. They know absolutely nothing about themselves. But as time progresses, they begin to come to the consciousness of who they are. The struggles, or the advantages and the privileges that they have, that reality begins to shape many decisions, many choices, many opportunities, and so many other things about their lives. It is the same way with us also as believers. It is expected that as we grow, we come into the consciousness of who we truly are. And this without doubt may affect the reality that we experience even as believers. From today's study, we are made to understand that many times the devil whispers things into our ears with the sole intention to deceive us so that we will not walk in the identity and authority that God has given to us. Why is it important for us to understand our identity? Why is it important for us to understand who we truly are? It is because the identity which we choose to believe about ourselves will definitely become what we experience. We cannot have a different experience from what we believe about ourselves. If the enemy sells to us lies about who we are and then we believe them, it means that we have agreed to enter into those experiences. If he gives you reasons, for example, why you should believe that you are expected to always fall sick and you believe, that becomes your experience. It is important for us to note, like we already learned from today's study, that what God says about us is what matters. Who he says we are is who we truly are. It does not matter what anyone says, irrespective of who that person is. In our memory verse for today, we see a peek into who God says we are. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 I would like to read it from the message translation. It reads, But you are the ones chosen by God. It says chosen for the high calling of priestly work. It says chosen to be a holy people. God's instrument to do his work and speak out for him to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. You cannot be specially chosen of all the people on earth called by him unto priestly work, chosen by him to be his own holy people called to be his instrument of work and you tell me that it is okay to be under the bondage of the enemy no way you cannot be called to speak out and to tell people about the unimaginable difference between darkness and his marvelous light and you would say that it is okay to be under the oppression of the wicked that is not true part of our text for today from the book of psalm 139 verse 14 tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything about us was done with precision and accuracy, with so much intentionality. You are not a mistake, irrespective of what anyone thinks. It is important that God's word is what shapes our minds and our thoughts concerning ourselves. It shapes how we perceive ourselves. It should shape what we should expect of God. Knowing who he is, his capacity and how much he loves us. So you would not take rubbish from the enemy. You would not simply accept or settle for anything. Do not let the enemy speak to you and let you believe that you should die in poverty. Do not let him make you believe that nothing good can come out of you. Do not make him believe that the last mistake you made is where you will remain, you would never rise. That is not true. Do not let him make you believe that there is no hope for you again. Do not let him show to you many of your contemporaries and how well they are doing and tell you that your own case is different. You will never make it. That is not true. Do not let him make you believe that you will never carry your own child. 
Do not let him make you believe that marriage is not for you. Do not let him make you believe that you cannot live a life that truly pleases God. That it is okay and normal to always go against his will. That is not true. Do not settle for what the enemy wants you to believe. Know yourself, know who you are in Christ. God's word is full of various promises for us. His word reveals his true mind concerning us and that is what we should dwell richly upon. He created us, therefore his book is his manual for our lives. I remember back then in school, one time I used to have a roommate. This young man was so addicted to smoking. Not cigarettes now. He smoked terrible things. I would always speak to him but he probably did not even believe himself that he could stop. He was already having an extra year at that time if I remember correctly. One day I saw him smoking and he just knew I would talk. So he quickly decided to offer it to me to even try. Thank God I knew who I was. Sadly, I don't know where he is today. I don't even know if he graduated. Do not let the enemy put you under any stronghold because of what he makes you believe about yourself. It is possible you have gone very far. You probably think you have gone too far away from God that there is nothing that can be done anymore. That is not true. Anyone who comes to him, he will in no wise cast away. I'd like us at this point to bow our heads and ask the Lord today, say, Father, please open my eyes to more understanding of your truths concerning me in Jesus' name. Ask the Lord today for a reorientation of our minds, that our understanding would be renewed, that he would help us to truly walk in his plans and intentions for us, that we will truly be a chosen generation. We would be a royal priesthood. We would be a holy nation, a peculiar people, those whom he intends to show forth his praise and the beauty of his ability to save us from darkness into his marvelous light. Ask the Lord today that no longer will we ever operate below the standards that he desires for us in Jesus' name. Also ask the Lord today that he would put within our hearts a genuine love for his word, that we will study and understand his plans for us. If there may be any way that the enemy may have spoken to our minds in time past that has limited us in any way, ask the Lord today that every of those mistakes of the past would be corrected now. Let us begin to walk in the fullness of all that God has planned and proposed for us in the name of Jesus. Begin to thank the name of the Lord, bless him, adore him for this great revelation that he has brought to us by his word today. Father, we are grateful. Be thou exalted, O Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Everlasting Father, we thank you for your word to us today. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. Thank you for the blessedness of your word. We are asking today that you would help us to always walk in the consciousness of who we are in you. Thank you, our dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a key point in today's study that tells us when you know your true identity in the scriptures, the devil will not be able to deceive you again. We receive the grace today to come to the consciousness of who we truly are in Christ and to never be deceived by the enemy again in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Ezekiel chapter 5 down to chapter 8. We also want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 6 of our Open Heavens devotional. We'll be singing, I am so glad that our Father in heaven. As you go for today, enjoy all the rights and the privileges that our Father in heaven has made available to you. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. God bless you greatly. We love you and bye for now.
shall my song through eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus does be. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. If one should ask of me, how can I tell? Glory to Jesus, I know very well. God's holy spirit with my thought agree. Constantly witnessing Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I believe today's devotional blessed you. We are always glad to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Let us know how this has blessed you. Also remember to follow us on all our social media handles to get more like this. You can share this with someone to bless them too. We gladly look forward to seeing you tomorrow again. Have a fulfilling day ahead. God bless you.